From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Sportsline. Hey there, Sportsline on your television. Steve Labon here with you. Glad you are here with us on News Channel 5 Plus. What a week of sports it has been post Thanksgiving around here. Obviously you got the huge Titans win in Indianapolis. Now they're getting set for another showdown against the eight and three Browns team at Nissan Stadium on Sunday. You got Tennessee, Florida coming up this weekend in Knoxville as well. 2.30 kickoff on News Channel 5. And then what about the Vanderbilt stuff? You've got a coaching change with Derek Mason. Todd Fitch now the interim coach as they finish out the regular season. Got a game this week at Georgia. Hopefully a game with Tennessee coming up in a couple of weeks. But obviously that is a huge change. We'll hear from Candace Story Lee, the athletic director who made that call about what she thinks and what she's looking for moving forward in a little bit on the show. But the other story that just took over the country last weekend around Vanderbilt football was because of the contact tracing amongst their specialist, Sarah Fuller, the goalkeeper from the SEC champion women's Vanderbilt soccer team, showed up at practice last week, got out there, showed them enough that pressed against the wall, they trotted her out as place kicker on Sunday at Missouri. Now, she didn't get a lot of action because they were so beat up by Missouri in that game. Her only action was the second half kickoff, a 30-yard squib kick that was recovered and downed essentially right at the spot for no return. But still, with that kick, Sarah Fuller made history as just the third woman to ever play in an FBS game and the first woman ever to do it in a Power 5 conference like the SEC. It was a historic moment that really championed women's sports and showed that women and young girls can dream of doing big things even in places that maybe people don't expect it. And it was really kind of a beautiful thing around the country. Sarah Fuller stepping onto the field in an SEC game and participating. And afterwards, she answered all the questions about what she thinks it means, how people have reached out to her, and the process of going from soccer goalie winning an SEC championship one Sunday to kicking in Columbia, Missouri in an SEC football game the next Saturday. Here's Sarah Fuller. Hey. It's another normal Saturday in the fall, huh? Yeah, yeah, super normal. <laughs> all right, let's take some questions for you, Sarah. We're going to start with Teresa Walker and then go to Adam Sparks right after that. All right, sounds good. Sarah, congratulations. Uh, yeah, I heard you after the game on TV, but uh, you know, how calm were you when you, when you knew you were going out there for the second half to uh, make some history and do the kickoff? Honestly, yeah, it was just, I just had to go out there and do my thing. Um, you know, I've worked on it, I know it's crazy, but all week. Um, <laughs> so, and I knew exactly what we needed to do and I had the team behind me and uh, amazing coaching staff and everything, and they prepared me really well for this, so. Um, again, like the nerves were more there for the SEC championship. So um, going out there and kicking the football wasn't wasn't too bad. bad so, Adam, go ahead. Yes, yeah, Sarah, um, Mike Wright just told us that you made a little bit of a halftime speech. Um, I'm sure you had you've done a lot of those for, for the soccer team. What in, what inspired you to do that? And how did that happen? You know, I. I just wanted more energy on the sidelines um, and going from the, I know I'm going to keep relaying it back to the SEC championship, but like our sidelines and everything was just what kept us going the entire time. And so I just wanted to go in there and say, Hey guys, we need to get pumped up and whether we're down or we get a first down or whatever it is, like we need to cheer each other on. Cause that's, that's the only way I've seen it work. Um, it's just everybody supporting one another. So. I don't know what the etiquette is at halftime, but did, did coaches ask if any players wanted to speak up, or did you ask to? Or no, how, I, I, I asked to talk, yeah. Ask who, Coach Mason or somebody else? Uh, I just walked in and asked a few people if I could talk, and they were like, oh, yeah, go ahead. So, um, And then I got everyone's attention, yeah. <laughs> cool, thanks. Molly Hunter, go ahead, if you're ready. <laughs> I see, too, it's like being weird. Yeah. There we go. I do this every day. Awesome. 
Awesome. Um, Sarah, huge congrats. This is so exciting. Um, would you do it again now that you've got a taste of it? Are you dying to get back out there? Yeah, I would love to. I would love to get out there and score a field goal. Um, I'd love to get out there and, you know, extra point and everything. So um, I would be happy to if they'll have me. So I love the team. They are amazing. The entire staff has been so incredible in this transition. And I could not ask for like a better team behind me to, to get me prepared. And honestly, I'm having so much fun and I want to learn more about like about how to kick and how to do things better. Um, Cause I think I really can refine it and, and get better from here. So I'm really excited. You mentioned the energy on the sidelines um, really fast. What's the difference, biggest difference between playing on a women's team and playing on a men's team? Um, well, it, I mean, I don't know about men and women, but it's like the different sports is uh, it's <laughs> football's a lot slower. There's a lot of lull time um, and soccer is just, you know, one after another, you're, you're constantly engaged. So, you know, with me, it was like just having to adjust like, okay, I need to stay like even kill, like, don't, don't get too pumped up. Don't get, you know, don't wear yourself out too soon um, with uh, football and everything. So just having to learn to adjust with that. But yeah, it's, it's been great. Kayla Anderson, please go ahead. Yeah, Sarah, uh, first of all, your smile is everything. I think uh, it makes us all feel so good in this 2020 year. Um, what a great story. <laughs> I'm just interested, you know, you're coming off of this SEC championship. You turned around, you're joining football practice. What was the week like in terms of preparation? Yeah, I mean, it was crazy because Monday I was packing to go home. And I got a phone call and from my assistant coach, uh, Ken, and I was, he was like, hey, you got a minute? And I was like, yeah, what's up? And um, he's like, yeah, they need a kicker. And I was like, all right, I'll be there in an hour. <laughs> so I'll be there within the hour. And um, it, it's, it's been like really awesome, actually. Like having to adjust to like the new schedule and everything is fine. And um, I don't know. The guys have been so great and so supportive and um, it's definitely, definitely a different structure to things like compared to like a soccer practice or whatever, but I, I like the, uh, the new experience and everything. So. Pat, go ahead. Hey, Sarah. Thank you. Um, just wondering, are you a speak up in the locker room type of person in soccer as well? Is that kind of your role within the team? Um, I think this year I, I have stepped up, uh, but n normally I'm, I'm more reserved and everything. I, I, I leave that for the goal. Um, you know, my, my team, there are teammates who have like bigger personalities and everything and know how to get the team pumped up, uh, you know, the way they, they need to. And um, I tend to be more like aggressive and straightforward. And uh, so I feel like my, my speeches and everything weirdly fit better with a football team more so than our soccer team. But um, it, I, I was glad I got, got to step up, um, use my goalkeeper voice in the locker room for once. So thank you. Yeah. Robbie. Yeah, hey, Sarah, I mean, uh, you've been a part of two SEC championship teams with the soccer program since you got there. So how were you able to, you know, I guess, how, how did being in a championship program maybe help you be able to make this transition, uh, especially, you know, so quickly and then from a leadership perspective too? Yeah, so I think um, we definitely touch a lot on like the culture of our team and we have, we have core values and everything and that's what we, we go by. And this year, especially with COVID and everything, my main focus and I and main focus as a team on the soccer team was, you know, you have to worry about the controllables. You can't worry about anything else because there's, there's no point in stressing about stuff that you can't control. So, um, you know, if someone gets sick, gets COVID or whatever, we, we cannot, you know, we have to keep moving forward. We cannot stress about all these things. And, um, or if we, uh, you know, we didn't know if we'd have a season first off like we we but the moment we were like all right but we're here and we're practicing so let's focus on our practices so um i think that was like the big thing and what has been so great like moving into football was um you know i'm just focusing on the controllables and the best thing i can do is is learn quickly and um like do the best i can for the team so that those were my controllables simon 
Yeah, Sarah, I'd be curious to ask about, you know, after the soccer season that saw you guys go four and four with plenty of ups and plenty of downs, and then you sort of routed right through the playoffs. After their eighth straight loss to the season, you know, what would your advice be um, to a football team that needs to put this, this loss behind them? Um, you know, I think you just need to bury it, move forward. Again, it's done. It's over with. Uh, there are, I don't know how many games left, three, two? Three, two left, two games left. Um, and so take it one game at a time, take it one practice at a time, um, and focus on what you can control next. And, you know, that's next practice, next meeting, whatever it is. So. Emily Proud, go ahead. Hey there. Uh, I just want to know a little bit more about uh, the Play Like a Girl campaign. Pain. I know it's an awesome organization. Um, just kind of tell me what uh, your relationship is with that organization and why you chose to put that decal on the back of your helmet today. Yeah, so it was about two years ago. I was at like an internship fair and um, like met with them and heard about their cause and everything. I ended up not being able to intern for them, but I thought their their cause was amazing. And then when I joined the football team, they, you know, we have our the stickers on the back of the helmets and the first thing I said is I was like I want to put play like a girl on the back of it because that's that's an organization in Nashville um, that supports uh, young girls and encourages them to continue playing sports because a lot of them quit playing around um, fifth, fifth sixth seventh grade and everything um, but it it encourages them to continue playing in that and also connects them with uh, women in STEM um, which I think is really important um, and encourages them to, you know, push the limits of what they think is possible and give them opportunities um, to continue to grow in, in sports and education. So, Marty Smith. Sarah, congratulations. Thank uh, you. Very inspiring to watch today and, and the way that you've reacted to it all. It's very rare to be the first person to do anything. So yeah. <laughs> how do you define the history that you made today and what is its broader impact? Um, oh gosh, I don't know. I, how do I define it? Um, honestly, I haven't taken a second to soak it all in really. Um, I just think it's incredible that I am able to do this and all I wanna do is be a good influence to the young girls out there because there were times like I struggled in sports, but I am so thankful I stuck with it. And it's given me so many opportunities. And it's, it's, I've met so many amazing people through sports. And I, you know, I just want to say like, literally you can do anything you set your mind to. Like that's, that's the number one thing. Thank you. Lane Higgins, do you still have a question? Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, well, Sarah, I read a little bit earlier this week that you had kind of been joking with some of your teammates that, you know, you could maybe do what college kickers do, which is, I think, a thought a lot of football fans have when you see these misses. But, you know, can you believe that you are finally in this position to actually get a test in a game of what that's like? And, you know, do you still have you, I guess, reached out to any of your teammates and given them a little bit of crap for doubting you? <laughs> Um, it was so funny, and my teammates have been incredible um, as well, the soccer team and everything. Um, yeah, that was crazy. We were sitting on the bus. Uh, I, I don't know if we were about to go to practice or something, but for, during the SEC tournament, and I was kind of like, I feel like I, I feel like I could do that. And they're like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, yeah, no, I, I do. And then, <laughs> and then it happened. Um, so that's crazy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, they've been amazing and I, I feel bad. A lot of them have texted me, but my phone's been blowing up and oh, I, sure. I just sent in the group chat. I was like, I love you guys. So sorry if I get, <laughs> couldn't text you back, but you're amazing. Like just know that. So yeah. Yeah. And in practices, I'm curious, you know, it's obviously different than. All right, Sarah Fuller, lots to be proud of there, but I also think as historic as that moment was. And as big as it was for women's sports, and as big as it was for Sarah Fuller, and the attention it gets for Vanderbilt, you have to think about it and put it in perspective of what it says about the Vanderbilt program. That story about Sarah Fuller last weekend was the most positive story about Vanderbilt football, period, in at least two years. Think about that. 
a story about someone who wasn't even on the team the week before coming on the field and playing for one play, one play, was the most positive story about Vanderbilt football in two years. That really tells you about where Vanderbilt football is right now. It's part of the reason that Derek Mason ends up losing his job. N not correlated to using Sarah Fuller as the kicker, but the idea that this could even happen at Vanderbilt and that the story became what it was and this huge press boom for Vanderbilt tells you where the program is. Sarah Fuller, and look, uh, this is not meant in any way of a criticism towards her. She was presented with an opportunity that isn't just once in a lifetime, it's once in ever. And she walked through the door and took it and paved the way for maybe others to do it in the future. Kudos to her for that. But at the same time, do you think that happens anywhere else in the SEC other than Vanderbilt? Do you see Nick Saban or LSU or Georgia or Florida or Tennessee, do you see them trotting out anyone from the student body, male or female, after one or two days of practice to kick in a game in the SEC? I don't think you do. But it happened at Vanderbilt last week. And not just that, but the story is so good, it becomes this huge thing that people tune in to watch the game, and what do they see? They watch Vanderbilt get smoked 41 to nothing. They only got inside the Missouri 44-yard line once in the entire game. Still weren't close enough to attempt a field goal. They obviously never got Fuller the chance to get an extra point. It was a pathetic performance. So even the thing that everybody tuned in to see, they barely got to see because that's how poorly Vanderbilt played. And guess what? Fuller, who had just won an SEC championship over the weekend, saw that from the sideline. So at halftime, she walked into the locker room and said, hey guys, can, can I speak for a second? And they let her do it. And she walked up and said, you guys have to keep your heads up. You have to be more encouraging. You have to have more energy. You have to create your own excitement on the sideline, no matter what it is. Even down 21-0, you got to be in it together. Props to her for stepping up and saying that because she's right. The buzz is completely gone from Vanderbilt football, and she saw it immediately coming from a championship team to that, a team that was on its way to 0-8. But here's the thing. While I give her all the props in the world for coming and saying that, I have great concern that it could be said in that locker room. This is someone who at that point had never played a snap of football, had only been on the team with the people in that locker room for two days or three days. And that person all of a sudden gets the floor at halftime? Where's the leadership? Where's the accountability within the room? To me, that the lack of that, where somehow that was even possible to happen, tells you what you need to know about where Vanderbilt football is. And what you've seen is you saw with Derek Mason, and it's not all his fault. They went 27 and 55. The record speaks for itself. That's on him. But he took over a program that had gone to three straight bowl games. And Vanderbilt was unable to capitalize on that. And yes, it's on Mason. Yes, it's on the players. But it's also on the administration. It's on the administration to support this football program better. The promises they made Derek Mason when they hired him in terms of commitment, resources, and upgrades to the facilities are just now starting to be rolled out. Derek Mason's gone now, and it's seven years later. That part is on the administration. And as they move forward, they've got to find a coach that fits Vanderbilt, but Vanderbilt has to support that coach, and they have to support the players to make the players have more accountability about themselves in the locker room. Because as good as the Sarah Fuller story is, and it's great, it's an awesome moment for college football, 
It was a cool moment for Vanderbilt. It's an incredible moment for Sarah Fuller and an inspiring moment for so many out there. The events of the day itself tell you a lot about where Vanderbilt football is right now. And it is a tall climb to get to a suitable place to really compete in the SEC. And the person responsible for making that hire to help them get there is Candace Story Lee, the athletic director. We will hear from her when we come back after this. This is Sportsline on News Channel 5+. Plus.